But I'm talking about an example that we've used a few times in the Word already. You know the old story about the boat and where Jesus said and commanded them to get into the boat, to go to the other side. And then he came later walking on the water and he had no plan to get into the boat but to go past them and then meet up with them on the other side. Also the other story where Jesus went with them in the boat but then he, he was sleeping while they had a storm. Hello. What am I saying? When you go through a storm, when you go through the desert, hello, when you go across the Jordan to see a giant, you cannot go without the word in you. Hello. Let's say the word must be already in me. When you go into this week, when you go into your challenge, when you go into your studies, when you go into studying the Word this week, doing exam or facing some challenges at the work or making fin certain financial decisions in your business, before you go into that situation, before you go into that meeting, you go in there with a Word. Hello? The Word was, go to the other side. Jesus said, go to the other side. Now you will find the storm, and if you didn't hear the voice of God, the voice of the storm will be louder than the voice of God. But you need to go with the voice of God, with the word of God. But if you don't go with the word of God, the storm will have a word for you. You're going to perish. And they said to Jesus, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to perish? The twelve spies... Twelve spies, two went with the word of God. They kept the word of God already in Egypt. They kept the word of God right through the desert. The desert, through the, the desert place, you didn't give up on the word. You didn't give up on the word. The word even became stronger. So when they crossed the Jordan to see how is the land out there, they didn't go through to find a word that would say yes or no. They already had the yes word in them when they crossed the Jordan. Hello? They just got more confirmation. And in the light of the word that was alive in them, they said, oh, there's giants, there are food. When you are facing the giants with a word, not we, with a word, when we face the giants with a word, we're going to grow. The giants are our food. We're just going to grow. So when the word comes against that, what is coming against you, you will grow. But then the word must be in you. But the guys that had, didn't have any word in them, and they crossed the Jordan to find a word there, the giant gave them a word. They came through and said, we are like grasshoppers in the eyes of the giants. No grasshopper. All giants said that. Hello? But that was the word that they took in their hearts. You go into your circumstances, you go into your storm, it will give you a voice and it will tell you who you are and what is your destiny. It has the right to do that because you <laughs> didn't take the word of God in your heart. So who's going to fill the void when you go into Canaan? The giant will fill the void. David came to Goliath with a word. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. So they got the prophetic word. And that is like a prophetic word over your destiny. Go to the other side. And your destiny is not the going. Your destiny is what you're going to do on the other side. The storm is just for a breakthrough. The storm is just so that on the other side, you walk in there with so much more faith. So much more faith. And you know, the awesome grace of God is when you will, you will have your breakthrough, you will have so much more faith. But if you are struggling, God, by His mercy, by His grace, will get into your boat. And on your behalf, He will calm the storm. And then still, you will have the breakthrough to say, wow, what God has done, before you get to the other side. 
With every storm, with every challenge, with every giant, God wants you to walk out there to say, wow about him. Let's say, wow about God. So you're facing the storm, you have a breakthrough when you start to say, wow about God. In what he has done in this situation. You're still here? I want to call the boat your hope. God is giving them the means to get to the other side. You have a hope. And say, you don't have to swim to the other side. There's hope. God's future for you, is it not plans to give you a hopeful future? My brother, my sister, and God will provide the boat for you. And in his name, through his word, with that boat of hope, you will go to the other side. And with that boat of hope, with that hope and the word of God, when you come in a situation, you will apply faith. From a place of hope, faith. But hope is the foundation. If you don't understand hope, Christ as your hope, the word as your hope, if you don't understand hope, the boat, you cannot get there in the storm. Through hope, you will go into the storm many times. Hope will bring you in the storm. The boat brought them in the storm. Hello? But with, because there's an unshakable hope in you, you can stand up and you can address the storm. Don't fight the storm, but address the storm. And who will fight? The Word. The Word will stand against the storm. The Word, Isaiah 55, so is the Word of God that was sent forth. It will not return void to God, but it will accomplish what it was sent for. The word will work. Let's say the word works. And I will work with the word. Okay, and then you can address the storm. And then the storm has no voice. But this, the word of the storm, the storm will get a voice in you. A voice of intimidation, of fear, of crisis management, of circumstantial intimidation. Your storm will become, will, you will give your storm a voice. If you don't come with the voice of God into the storm, the storm will have a voice in you. No, let that not be so in Jesus' name. But if you don't get into the word, all the other voices will start to have the right to speak in your heart, in your mind. And you, your mind and your heart become a rubbish dump. A rubbish dump for whatever the enemy wants to dump there he has the right to do that he has the right chandre he has the right to dump it there if you don't fill it with the word but if you fill it with the word of god he has no right he cannot it's impossible are you with me so please get your breakthrough as you go in the desert get your breakthrough before before, before the Jordan. Joseph didn't walk into, walk into the palace and were given authority to speak to Pharaoh. No, no, no. He had that authority already in the, in the jail. He walked with the authority that he already had in jail and he just changed the venue. <laughs> Hello? He just changed the venue. But he had the authority already. God had worked the work in him already. And so, my brother, don't waste your time. Don't waste it that you will mess up your destiny. Mess up the Canaan. Mess up the, the, the possibility and the opportunity in the palace. When God wants to bring you before a Pharaoh, and they will stand amazed at your wisdom. Because it will be the wisdom of God. Oh man, we are in a season... And the world's going to be shaken. Deception will come in. You can see it. It's just like this. And then a, a third world war can happen. We don't believe that in Jesus' name. But in the midst of everything that can be shaken, will you not be the stupid virgin? No. The foolish virgin. Because you couldn't read the signs. You couldn't see the season. So the season was to wara wara instead of to be wise. Let's say wise or wara wara. May God give you wisdom. 
May God give you that wisdom, my brother, my sister. I'm telling you prophetically, God is saying to you, now, now you need to get into the word. Now. If you haven't spent time, certain times, because it's not steady time. Get into the word. Say, God, give me a hunger. If you see that you don't have a hunger for the word, go to God and say, God, give me a hunger for the word. Because if you're not going to hunger for the word, you're going to hunger for rubbish. But you're going to hunger. But now you fight the rubbish not to hunger for the rubbish. Just get into the word. The word will fight for you. When the light comes in, you don't fight the darkness. The light in you fights the darkness. When the light is on, the darkness must submit and flee. You're with me? Amen. The unshakable hope will stabilize your boat. The unshakable hope will stabilize your boat. Write that down. The unshakable hope will stabilize your boat in the midst of the storm. Because the hope in you is not shakable. And now we say, no, you must have the faith to get to the other side. You know, before you have need some faith, you can go a little bit back. Faith is based on hope. Hope, why? You say to the storm, God said, I must go to the other side. God, with all respect, was not confused. That he forgot that there will be a storm and they will not make it. If God said that he will go, you will go to the other side, you will go to the other side. And he will provide for you to go to the other side. And that's where the boat comes in. But if you come in the storm and the only thing that you can think of is to get all the water out of the boat because you're on the brink of sinking, you're going to sink. The most logic thing, if you have any, in any way a brain, if you have a brain, you must get the water out. Physics. Okay. And you can work the rest of your life and you can be so tired with the working and the struggling and the this because it's just getting the water out of the boat, getting the water out of the boat, getting the water out of the boat because you are faithful to get to the other side because God said get to the other side. And you had to struggle because the enemy came against you and it's the devil's fault and, because, and, and you stood for the Lord. What a hell of a waste of a life. Because God didn't call you just to get all the water out of the boat for the rest of your life. And at the end, at least, you made it to the other side. There, you had to start to live that destiny for what God has for you there. So I can struggle with the water in the boat or I can address the storm with the word and let the word deal with everything. Oh man, the word is for you. God is for you. His word is for you. He gave you everything. So God wanted to pass them because he had the faith. He believed that they will carry. What will carry them through is the boat with the word. And that they have the faith. And that's why when he got into the boat, he said, you little of faith. Why? Based on the hope in your situation, you need to respond with faith. Why do you have hope? I'm going back to faith. Your faith sometimes can go like this. Hello. But there's an unshakable hope, and his name is Jesus Christ that is in here. And why will you understand you have hope? Because you respect him. You tell me today you don't respect Christ, then yes, you have no hope. But to say, no, I don't have hope, that's emotion. But in you, there's an unshakable hope. Don't be deceived to think it's not there. An unshakable hope. And you know that because, first of all, you respect him. You honor him. And you believe he didn't lie. So when he said, the unshakable hope, said to you, you will go to the other side, you will make it. Why? Because you respect what he said. You don't put a question mark behind what he said. So before you need faith or not, you need to be arrogant. You say, I question what God said. 
I first of all question what he said. No. So start with respect for God. Respect for his word. Amen. And that you decide that he can only speak the truth because he is the truth. He can just be himself. In that sense. Are you with me? Ah, oh, please, man. So when you're in your situation, God will send you in that situation so that what? So that you can grow. God will show them the giants so that Joshua and Caleb can say, we're going to grow. They can find the vision. When you see the challenge, you find the vision to grow. You're going to find the vision to say, they are our food. You're going to find the vision in that sense. Are you with me? So my brother, let's go for it. With what God has said. But now, God in his wisdom, yes, like we said, you go with the word, you go with the boat, you go with the hope, with the hope right through. But when everything is shaking, you know, God in his grace, he will come and he will get into the boat. He will get into that boat that is sinking. That hope, according to you, that is sinking. That your hope is sinking because circumstances is coming in and in and in. And your hope is going to drown. And you with your hope going to drown. The, the, the unshakable hope will come into your situation. And he will deal with it. By his grace. They didn't believe that he will come and deal with the boat. They didn't believe that. The God in his grace, he was just there. So when you do in obedience what God has called you to do, and sometimes it's shaky, sometimes you feel, oh, Lord, I cannot anymore. Oh, Lord, it's just trouble, 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 or oh, this come in, and this temptation, and that weakness, and this fear, and that instability, and that fear of rejection, and that lighty or gulky as a temptation. <sighs> Call out to him. Are you with me? But no, you can expect the unshakable hope to come into the boat and he will deal. He will deal with the storm. He will deal with the storm. But you know what he became? He became the boat. After he came in, I will take over. What will get you there is me and my word. Don't look at the boat. He didn't get in there and help them quickly to get all the water out. <laughs> Are you with me? And sometimes we pray that God will help us to get the word of water out of the boat. We need to pray that we will have the faith to understand how to respect he, what he told you. But you need to see your destiny. What is God saying to you for this year? What is, now, it's not about, must I become a farmer or engineer or a pilot? That's not, first of all, what it is. It's about the promises of God and how you will be victorious. Do you see yourself as a victorious man of God? Do you, do you see yourself healed, not reacting in that way that it happened yesterday? No, I'm going to be different. But we see ourselves trying, trying. Hopefully I will not be in trouble. I try not to be in trouble. I try not to be in trouble. No. That's how you see yourself. So for the next 20, 30, 40 years, you will try not to be in trouble. Or you see yourself victorious. Is it not 1 John 5 that says, it's your faith that will overcome the world. It's your faith in how you see yourself. And my hopeful future is, first of all, that I will stand with Christ. I will rule and reign with him from heavenly places into my situation. That I will see my situation as opportunity. You don't have crisis. You just have opportunity. Opportunity to grow. Hello. But what a mess and a, and a waste of a life. If I can go through Egypt, I can see all the miracles. And God put this ten, ten plagues there. So that the nation will come to fear him. It was not just for Egypt to be shaken. It was for his children to see the wonder of their God. Because they had the intimidation, the storm. They hit the wow. They, the gods were Egyptians. 
that oppressed them all the way. And they had that slavery all the way, all the way, all the way. And God showed him, God showed them who the, he is. Amen. God wants to show you who he is. And if you can take that and you embrace that and see at what he has done in your life and you go with that, you can go through the desert, not moaning and groaning, but even see the other miracles in the desert. And if you can take that and that and that and you, ch you are challenged through the desert, but you come out not with, ah, I made it through the desert. You come out with testimonies of the quails and the manna and the water and everything. Are you with me? You come through your storm with testimony. You come through your desert with testimony. Then in that place, you cross the Jordan and you take the land. You take your destiny. Amen. Prophetic productivity. You will be productive. You will succeed. Two talents will be four. Five will be ten. Let it be so for you in Jesus' name. May you see that. But first of all, you need to see yourself in your destiny. It's not seeing Canaan. You need to see you in Canaan. But the vision must first of all be you with Christ in that place. You with Christ in success. You cannot necessarily give the definition of the success today. But you can give 200 points of the definition of who you can be in, that, in your destiny. Who you can be in your destiny. You have the answers. You can write for a week about who you can be in your destiny. So why we don't do that? Why, why, why just we want to find the definition of Canaan? Joshua Caleb came back, not first of all with a definition of Canaan, what, what is there. They came back and they said what God said and what they believe, what God wants to do with them and for them. And that's the essence. And the rest will submit for that purpose. But God in his grace will be there for you, my brother. He will be there for you. Are you with me? You honor you honor the storm, you cannot honor God. He's with the one or the other one. That's why in worship, we can wara wara in worship. When it's, it's time to praise God, then these guys are still wara there, these guys still there. If you find a leader there, just outside, what, just go and ask him, um, is this very important now? Hello? Because the most important is not now, when I when I'm preaching. The most important is when you are in direct conversation with God in worship. When you're honoring Him, when you're praising Him, when you're worshiping Him, that's when you're supposed to focus the most and push yourself into a victory that you will become the worshiper in spirit and truth. Hello? That when you have the opportunity, you are arrested because this is why I was made, first of all, to worship Him in spirit and truth. This is who he longs me to be. He has a desire for me to be that worshiper in spirit and truth. Hello. So bless your father. Bless your master. Through the Holy Spirit that will help you. When you sing, don't wara wara. So that you will teach yourself how to wara wara in a lifestyle where you're supposed to honor him. We draw strength from one another in that setting. Amen. As you lament me. When you have your breakthrough, you are through the storm with a boat, with hope that God has given you. You go through the storm and you're on the other side, you have your breakthrough. Then what? You don't live to have a breakthrough. You live for that what is beyond the breakthrough. The breakthrough is for a purpose. You can write that there. Breakthrough is for purpose. And you will never find the purpose if you're always struggling with your breakthrough. You always have an issue with this. This is not nice. This is not good. This is not lack. This is not this circumstance. Okay, you cannot do it for God. Okay. 
But maybe God want to challenge you that you can do it for him. That you can say, doesn't matter my circumstance, doesn't matter if I understand or not understand, doesn't matter if I feel like it or not. I use this opportunity to say, God, you are God. You have an awesome destiny for me. You are the truth. And you spoke the truth that my destiny is excellent. That's what I believe. That's what I go for. Amen. Breakthrough is for a purpose. So it's so that on the other side, we went through the storm. We came there. Now what? So that Jesus and you, they went about and it was miracles. It was breakthroughs for people. They had impact. Major testimonies for the people. Your breakthrough is for others, not for yourself. Hello. Because God is a God for a people, not just for a person. He died for a people. That will be his family. His family. He dreamt about a family. Are you with me? So there's no you without, outside the context of family. Amen. Mm, okay. Go with that breakthrough. Go with that breakthrough. In Jesus' name. You know, in the one situation then, when they came to the other side, when they came to the other side, there was this guy with all these legion of demons. That's millions and millions of, of demons. You know, and uh, God had an agenda. But the first thing that happened when Jesus came on the scene, the devils understand authority. The devils can recognize authority. So it wasn't the people that came to Jesus. It was the devils. Because they understood who he, who he is. The devils, Kataza in you, they understand authority. And they must make sure that you don't understand who in worship is moving to you. Who during this, when we, while we preach, who is speaking to you? Who is sitting next to you? Who is working in you? They, he must, they must make sure. So when you start to speak the word or you hear the word or you pray, then the devil is awake. Then the devils, they are awake. And that makes me make sure you don't understand the authority of Christ. You are sleepy. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Just go, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you've heard this before. You've heard that before. Uh, yes. It's amazing how sleepy people can get when you're busy with a word. But just be busy with something else. With a ragabush, the rugby or the soccer or the, a certain movie. And then you're not sleepy. It's, you know, if it's your favorite movies, you know, some series, people look over and over again. You know, that one movie that you have watched four times. And you manifested about that. You manifested. You took offense that you had to watch that movie four times. But that's with a sermon. That's when you read the word. And you've heard something for the, for the second or the third time. That is only in the past. Not more anymore. Amen. In the past. Oh, the past. is gone. But when you hear something that you've heard before, it's like you, you give yourself the right to focus on something else. But if you heard that word, and that word is working in your life as if you are Jesus himself, the Son of God. If that word is working in you like as if you are Jesus, the Son of God, then please become sleepy. Hello. But if you are not, then when you hear, if you have a desire for the word, and you appreciate the word, and you decide that this is the essence of my life, this is the best movie, and I can watch this movie a hundred, a thousand times. That's your choice through the Holy Spirit. Then when the word is there, you're awake. Because when the word is there, the devil is awake. I'm not saying the devil is in you. I'm saying whatever demons want to come close to you, and they have an agenda of with you, when the word is spoken, they are awake. Yes, Jesus coming to the reason. They run to him. More than one, one example in the word. They run to him. 
He said, are you here to, to punish us before our time? Secondly, we said last time, and it was said by the one pastor, Pastor Atta also, that Moses negotiated with God. But you know, devils also negotiate. So the devils came to him and negotiated with God. God, can you, can we stay in this region? Please, please don't take us from this region. But, but please, can we go for the pigs? And the devils will show uh, um, that pig in him, or that, just an example, uh, that pig, or that piggies, or whatever, that pig. Can I go into that? Why can they say that? They have legal rights. Because you have your petty issue with people, or your petty issue with that. The devil has legal right to tell Jesus, please, Send me into that piggy attitude of that lady. Or that piggy thing in that guy. Those pigs could have been provisioned for them, but their heart is set on the, on the pigs, not on you, Lord. So we have right. We have legal right to take that place and forsake it and drown the guy in that area of his life. Let him drown in that attitude. Let him drown in his miserable pointing of fingers to others instead of dealing with himself. Let him drown in that temptation. Let him drown in that state of mediocre walking and hearing the word, and going through the worship, but he's all just there, all a sleepy story. Sleepy story. But if you will change a little bit, if you will give a little bit more attention than your sleepy, sleepy story with a word, the devil's going to stress. They're going to be wide awake <laughs> before you are a little bit awake. If you start to wake up, they're going to be wide awake. What's going to happen? Because we're going to lose ground here. They could negotiate. That what stands between you and God. The devil... God wants to tell the devil, you have no right on that man. No right on Peter. No right on Patrick. No right on Kieran. Yes, Lord, but that thing that stands between him and you, drive us in there. Drive us into there. Into that place. Because there's a place for us to make a squatter camp in the wrong way, in an illegal way. Uh, you're still here. You're still here. My brother, my sister, please, go with your breakthrough, but understand, understand, you need to deal with the pigs. What was the whole situation? They had a very successful business with 2,000 pigs. Very successful business. But their identity in the success, the, the heart in the success, the heart in the success, so what the heart was in when it was in Christ, the devil, under the permission of the Lord, can destroy it. Are you with me? So let's deal with the pigs in our lives. Amen. Amen. And then we need people to address us. We need people to speak to us. And then we need to take, not to take offense when, when something that is very precious for me, that people touch it. I'm sensitive about that area of my life. Because that area is a little bit precious more than what it's supposed to be. So they really took offense and told Jesus to leave. They told him to leave. But you know, there's a man that Jesus commanded to stay. Wow, now he must take all the flack. He must take all the blame. Now he must take all the ridicule, whatever, you know? This guy had all the demons. I know Jesus came and drove it out, but all your demons crushed my business. All your demons. Hello. All your demons crushed my business. 2,000 pigs gone. Oh. So I don't know if they had, that man had all the applause from the whole city. But this man had a wow. 
who I am and what happened to me. It's wow. It's only God. It's only God that could have done this. It's only God. Now, if you walk with God in an accurate way, you will have a wow about what God has done and what God is doing. You will have a wow. Let's say, I will have a wow about what God is doing in my life. And with that wow, he's... He went to the cities and five cities was shaken. They were shaken for Christ. This man, the, the least to be picked, the least absolutely ridiculous to think that that man will shake five cities for Christ. But he was the man because he was open to have a wow about what God has done in his life. How grateful are you for God's grace over your life that what you have is a wow? It has nothing to do with your nice decisions, but it is a wow from God over your life. That's why you will evangelize, that's why you will speak to people, that's why you will not try and take chances like a little kitty, kitty, kitty here with the, the students here in the wooden house. Hello, hello. Are you still with me? Because you decided, I'm going to grow up. When the temptation come, and the, the ladies on the other porch say, hello. And the guys, hello. You're going to decide to grow up. Tell your neighbor, grow up. And I'll say it with attitude. Grow up. Ah, are you with me? So you're a man, you're a woman with a mandate. Let's say, I'm a man with mandate. I'm a woman with womanate. <laughs> Lemonate with a mandate. Yeah, yeah. Ladies? Thank you. One. Praise the Lord for her. So with all of that, I pray. I pray today, my brother and my sister, that you will understand you will go into that storm. And if you have a word of God, there will be a storm coming. There will be a giant because once God wants to brag about his word. He will want to show you the impact of his word. He wants to show you like he's shown through Moses. God says, let my people go. And if you don't respond to this word, you will see the impact of the word. You will see the impact of the word. You will see the impact of the word. You will see the impact on the word. Every time, everything is shake. So that the fear of God can come upon his people. So that they know when God is speaking, it's going to happen. If that happened to them, we need to embrace God's word. And the generation that had the word of moaning and groaning, because the circumstances became a word, they gave a voice to the circumstances, a voice to their issues, a voice to their, to their attitude. And all these other voices had the final say. When they had to just enter the land. And God, the devil will set you up. The devil will say, Let, it will not happen like, oh, you have this major issue. Little by little by little by little. Start to have an issue. And then God said, now you, you've moaned, you've groaned, you stood against me ten times. And now you will not enter the land. Now you will not enter the land. No. Let's not miss our destiny in such a way. Are you with me? But embrace the word of God before the desert. And if you find yourself in a desert, make sure. If you find yourself with temptation and struggles, make sure you're getting to the word. And if you find yourself that you can hear the word, but it doesn't do anything in you. Say, Holy Spirit, change my heart. Touch my life. Because there's things, certain things that will touch you, that will just give you a brrr, a resonate with you, that will do something in you. But if the Word of God does nothing in you, we don't say it like that, but if you can go through the motions of hearing the Word, but there's no resonating with your spirit. We're going to see spirit, body, and soul just now. But if it doesn't bring a change in here, it, if you don't, if you cannot sense that something is coming alive in you when you hear the word, then your spirit, the true essence of who you are, 
you are somewhere suppressing him, suffocating the true you. Why will you do that? Let's get out of that. Amen. Can we get out of that? Deal with the pigs and present your body as a holy, living, pleasing sacrifice unto the Lord. Thank you, God, that you're going to help us. We trust you for that, Lord. I pray for every man, woman, sitting in this place where some of them don't experience hope. God, I pray that they will, by faith, get into the boats of hope, that they will stay in the boat of hope. God, even walking on the water like Peter, but then you took him back into the boat. You took him back into the boat. You took him back into the mandate, back into that what you've commanded them to do. And you became the eternal living hope in that situation. Show yourself, Lord, please, as our eternal living hope in our situations. Thank you for your grace that when we don't get it right, you come and you get into our boat, Lord. But God, teach us how to respect your word, how to respect that what you've said. Respect the truth coming from your mouth and allow the word to deal with the storm. We choose that today. Holy Spirit, that the word of God will dwell richly in us, richly in us, in the name of Jesus Christ. We honor you that you're going to come and do that for every man, every woman in this place. As all say, amen, amen. Let it be so.